Hello, my name is Dr. Gleisner, and this is a follow on video from 4.112 in a, a specification. And I will uh, talk uh, about filtration, crystallization, simple distillation, fractional distillation, and chromatography in a very basic way, but so that you've got an idea um, of the, the um, processes as they, as they work, hopefully. Um, so let me just get rid of this. Okay. So um, filtration is reasonably simple. Just imagine you're making a cup of tea. So you've got your um, mug of my my drawings are all beautiful like this, by the way. OK, you've got your tea bag in there and in the tea bag, you've got your tea and you've just put your hot water in there and you can see the nice tea goodness coming out and making a beautiful cup of tea. So brilliant. That is an example of filtration. Why? Because in the tea bag, you've got a solid, you've got that solid tea. And analogously, you can make uh, coffee uh, with a very, uh, very simple process that is very analogous. Um, so you've got your, um, you've, ooh, ah, that's supposed to be a conical flask, Jesus. Okay, um, there we go. So you've got your funnel uh, sitting on top of a conical flask. This is a filter paper and uh, you put your um, coffee in here, okay, and then you put hot water on top of that and what comes out is coffee. Now, if you, let's say you've made, you're not making tea or coffee, but you're making, in fact, a real, uh, a real chemical, a chemical from a, a chemical reaction, and you end up with a mixture where you have a product which is a solid right so that that's in there and you also end up with your solvent or the uh, reaction mixture uh, in here and you want to separate the two then that is exactly also what you uh, can do or if you have done a chemical reaction and actually so for example if you wanted to extract caffeine from coffee right? For whatever reason, that was one of my first experiments, which went horribly wrong as an undergrad. So you put your, your coffee powder or your tea in here, you put your hot water on it, and the caffeine actually dissolves into the water. So the caffeine goes into the hot water. What you then want to do is you want to keep the water, but you don't want to have the tea or coffee in there. So you can then filter it off. And what you get is a solution with caffeine in it, and also some uh, possibly some uh, uh, colorful compounds in there. But that is uh, that is what um, filtration is all about. Now, that brings us on. So we are sticking with this example. Uh, crystallization is essentially now that you've filtered it, what you've got, so you've, you've put that in there, the filter taken, has taken out all the solid bits. What you've got now is a solution which um, has a uh, something dissolved in it. So you've got your your water is probably your solvent and you've got your caffeine in there. And just I'm just going to pretend there's nothing else in there, just water and caffeine. What you can do is you can now, uh, uh, if, if that was hot water, you can cool it down. And as you cool water down, you actually reduce the solubility of the caffeine. And you can even put a little bit of caffeine in there and just wait for it to crystallize. If there's, uh, obviously you want to use as little hot water initially as possible because caffeine is quite soluble. But if you've got used as little water as possible, then eventually you can see the crystals grow. You can do this yourself by uh, dissolving uh, as much as you possibly can of sugar in hot water and then leave it to stand down. Now, I used to do this as a, a child, grow my own sugar crystals. So you've got uh, a horribly drawn bottle again. There we are. And you have hot, obviously you have to um, be careful with hot water and so forth, but you have hot water, you put as much sugar in there as you possibly can so that it dissolves. And then what you can do is you can tie a little bit of wool around a pencil and dangle it into into the hot solution. And the wool, because it's got lots and lots of rough bits of fiber, um, actually facilitates the growing of the sugar crystals. You can just leave it and 
uh, uh, leave it to crystallize. Most of the time, there's going to be some imperfection in the glass, which means that the, the sugar crystals are going to grow. You can then also leave the, uh, if you've got a shallower dish, you can leave the water to evaporate and then get, get even more sugar out of solution. So these are all examples of crystallization. I'm going to move on to uh, distillation. Okay. How am I doing for time? Okay, so I'm going to speed up with distillation. I'm going to sh give you a uh, very uh, quick example. So how do you make whiskey or uh, anything alcoholic? Well, what you can do is you basically um, have a, a round bottom flask. You put your, I used to do this with cherry Coke as well. Cherry Coke is, is actually much better than an example. Um, not alcoholic and all that. And you basically um, uh, put the cherry coke in here, you heat it up, you control it with a thermometer in case you're wondering what the hell that was. And so now, and you put some anti-bumping granules in so that it, you don't get like spontaneous bubbling over. So it nice, as you heat it up, uh, it, it uh, actually boils uh, evenly and gradually. The, the water will evaporate and you then put it into a condensing uh, condenser. Sorry, I've drawn that the wrong way around. That should be at the bottom. Does it matter? Uh, probably not for the minute, but the water always goes in at the bottom uh, and comes out at the top. Um, and uh, the, the water then condenses. What the water also does, it takes the aroma of the cherry uh, coke with it, and then you can uh, collect it in a vial, and then you can sniff it, and you can clearly sniff uh, the uh, cherry flavoring or if you were doing this with um, like uh, something containing alcohol, then the alcohol would come off and you can uh, you can collect the alcohol separately. So uh, in case of alcohol, let's say it's got a boiling temperature of 60 degrees, the alcohol. So you leave the uh, this area at 60 degrees. You don't actually get it to boil. Uh, and that means that the water, which boils only at 100 degrees, stays down here and the alcohol evaporates and then you cool it down to uh, 25 um, degrees, let's say, and that makes the the water condense back into a liquid, and uh, the the alcohol condense back into a liquid, and you can collect it there. Now, fractional distillation is exactly the same thing, but what you do is you have um, essentially different outlets at different temperatures. So, in reality, what happens is you do this in crude oil distillation, for example. So, you put some crude oil into a big machine, and you heat it up. And then you, oopsie daisy, you uh, heat it up and it gets, it's hottest down here. And then it, as you'd expect, if, as you go through it, it sort of cools down. So that could be 100 degrees, 200 degrees, 300 degrees Celsius. And um, the, the bigger the molecules, they're all relative, let's say they're all relatively similar. They're all alkanes. The bigger the molecules, the harder they will find it to separate out from each other. So the higher up you get, uh, the, um, the the shorter the molecules get. So you can separate the different, uh, the, the mixture of crude oil, which is a mixture of many, many uh, thousands of compounds, at least into groups of compounds. So you can get uh, different lengths still in these, uh, in these, they're called plates, distillation plates, but essentially you get like the, the longest ones uh, that can still evaporate here. And then you get shorter ones there and then you get the very shortest ones uh, at the top and the ones that won't evaporate at all are the very longest one that's uh, normally called bitumen or uh, tar or asphalt and they will just never ever do anything uh, if you unless you heat them uh, they'd rather burn um, or decompose if you heat them too high okay so um, and chromatography finally okay I might do chromatography in a separate video because this one's already uh, getting long and chromatography is really interesting. Uh, I mean, not that this isn't, but uh, see you in the next one.